In this video, we're going to take our first look at a linked list and take a look at an implementation of a linked list in Java. A common use of objects is to put them in some kind of a list, such as an array and, in this example, a linked list. A class can be defined to represent each of these objects in the list called a list node. And a node contains the data that's stored and also a reference to the next node in the list. So if you imagine that you have a list of items where each item is aware of the item that's right next to it. And that's a linked list. Here is a visual of a linked list. Imagine you have several nodes. You have the first node, which has the data 12, and a pointer to the next node, which has the data 99. And that has a pointer to the node next to it, which contains the data 37, pointing to the next node, which has data 56. So all these nodes are holding integers. And then the last node, the tail node 56, is pointing to null because it's the end of the list and there's nothing else to point to. And 12 is referred to as the head node because it's the first node in the linked list. And with the linked list, you have the ability to insert a new node anywhere that you want in the list. You can insert it right in the front and just simply point that new node to 12. Or you can insert it between 99 and 37 and just point 99 to the new node, let's say 17, and then point 17 to 37. And the value null indicates that a reference variable does not refer to any object. So 56 is pointing to the reference null meaning that there's nothing next to 56 in the linked list. We've reached the end of that linked list. Let's take a look at an implementation of a linked list. In this class called node, we have two instance variables. We have the data, which is what we're going to store in the linked list, and another node object. It's an object of itself called next node, which is a reference to the next node. And that node itself is going to contain data and another next node object. And we have three constructors. We have the default constructor, so we can create nodes without knowing any of the data or what the next node is by setting the data to zero and the next node to null. If we knew what the data was, we can construct a node object by passing that data to it and setting the next node to null. But if we know the data and we know what the next node is, we could set the data and assign the next node to that node using this parameterized constructor that takes both fields or instance variables as parameters. And this is an important method right here called insert after. The insert after method takes a node as a parameter and then it stores the calling object's next node in the, as a temporary node. And then we reassign the calling object's next node to the node that we passed in as a parameter. And we set that parameter's next node to temp, which was the original calling object's next node. And that is how we insert anywhere in the middle of the linked list. So it's very straightforward. And we also have methods to get the next, which will return the next node in the linked list, and print node data, which simply just prints out the data for the calling object's node. And here is the main method in linked list demo where we create a few nodes. We have a head node, which is going to be the first node in the list, and also nodes 1, 2, and 3. And current node is what we're going to use to iterate through the linked list to print out all the data. So first we set the head node, which is the front of the list, to 12. And we use the constructor where we only know one of the items. And, and then we insert more nodes to the linked list. We insert node 1 after the head. We insert node 2 after node 1, and node 3 after node 2. So we're gradually building the linked list that we saw in the diagram with data values 12, 90, 37, and 56. And each one is pointing to the node next to it, except for 56, which is going to point to null, because we're not inserting anything after that. And the constructor pointed its next node reference to null. And then we iterate through the linked list and print out all the data. We set the current node to the head node. And, we, and while that current node is not null, meaning while we're not at the end of the linked list, we call the print node data method. And we set current node to the next node. And that is how we traverse through the linked list and print out all the data. So that's pretty much it. And this is an implementation of a linked list. although. 
there is a linked list class that you could use when you're really creating a linked list and it has all this functionality already built into it and this class is a member of the Java Collections framework. And just to make sure that it works, let's run the main method and see the results. So I'm going to click run and here are all the data elements for each node. There's 12, 90, 37, and 56.